And we're here at the ID Tech X show. Hi. Hi, welcome to our booth. I'm Justin Spitzer. We are here today at our ID Tech X booth from Molex Printed Circuit Solutions. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our capabilities and our manufacturing. All right. So, so what, are, what, do you, what are these kinds of things you do around here? So Molex manufactures two types of flexible circuitry. What you have up here is, so is copper flex, and then we also have silver flex. Copper flex is typical of your standard PCB manufacturing capabilities, where it's a removal process, a copper substrate, where additive flex or silver flex is an additive process where we're adding layers onto, onto a single substrate. So how do you add those layers and wh what do you do there? So this is a silk screen process and we're able to build the equivalent of a four to six layer PC board on one layer of substrate by adding layers of silver and dielectric and being able to create vias between top layers and bottom layers. And this is the, like the more traditional kind of PCB? Mm, or yes, this is, this is traditional copper flex multiple layers, you can get higher currents. So we offer customers the options for either one, whichever one is the best solution for their application. Does this, is this more uh, towards the printed electronics kind of world the, right This here? is print, yes. This is what you would consider conventional, or the new world of printed electronics. And what are you showing here in your hand? So this is a representative capability of a circuit that we have done where we have multiple layers, we have vias, we're representing, we've converted this from a PC board to a silver flex. We would be able to attach components and this is a representative of attaching a complex IC with solder. Is this like real or is it just a demonstration? This, this is a demonstration, this is a representative of an actual part though. But actually all these lines and, and dots and everything is actually something that could be functional? That is correct, yes. And they but would it's all flexible. have. Yeah, that is correct. But how much so, uh, how much um, detail and how much uh, how complicated does it get? I mean, how much is possible with it, this kind the of stuff? As I say, it's the equivalent of a four to six layer PC board. So you can do down to five mil, five thousandths of an inch space and trace, and we can do the vias. And so we are able to do build up multiple layers on, on the one layer of substrate. So four layer of this size or in conventional PCB would be smaller than that, right? Well, it, it depends. The layers are going up, right? You're stacking layers on layers. But with a PCB, you would typically be stacking material layers. Here, we're just printing layers of ink which is what makes it an additive process versus a, a removal process with the typical copper, nice. right? And so this can be more cost effective. The goal right now we print on, on PET or polyesters, but in the future you will see it on fabrics and I'm sure you've seen it around fabrics, paper, other materials. That's the, that's the benefit of doing additive manufacturing. And it's also less harmful to the environment. Here's a the representation so, of the PCB? Yes, so this is just a, again another representation of the PCB. Uh, actually, uh, the of, of the flexible substrate. Visitors right? of your booth can get take this? Uh, yes, is exactly. This, uh, this is this the is sample. Your... This is our, a sample for anyone to come up and take and as, is representative of our capabilities. And do you ship like billions of these kinds of things or how? how or are you in, one in of the, the millions. In the millions. Millions yes. of these? Correct. You're so one of the leaders are, in making this. I apologize? Are you one of the leaders in the industry? Yes, I, I believe we are, right? So we can take this from prototype concept to prototype to production. And, and uh, we've been doing this for over 20 years. And, and here's some other implementations of uh, things you're doing. So very good, yes. So we have NFC. And we are now integrating wireless technology into it. As we're able to get more dense and more complex components. What's we're happening here? So this is a representative of a conversion from a PCB um, kit to a silver flex kit and showing how we, you can actually bend the circuitry around corners. Nice. And so this is, it's called a liquid sand demo. So it has a gyroscope on it and as you tilt it, it will move the particles back and forth as representative of the old school liquid sand when, when kids were playing with it. And what is this? And this is an NFC temperature patch. 
So this was a demonstration that there, this is able to measure temperature with an NFC charge that would come from your phone or other reader. There's no battery on this, so it's dormant until you put the charge in. The antenna collects the energy, allows it to be powered until uh, with, with an NFC uh, charger, and then you're able to read the data back. So you're able to get temperature readings off of that. This and the representative is you can put it on your body and basically measure your temperature or another product with a, with a phone without having mechanical contact. This is a hybrid, right? There's a little chip? That is correct. And so, how do you put it exactly where it needs to be? So we have SMT capabilities, full SMT capabilities, and we use either silver uh, epoxy or low temp solder or the Sunray ZTAC material. This is another demo? That's the same one showing different different uh, materials. So we had we have clear materials, we have white materials, we can do it on different different substrates. Nice. And you're showing some implementations of um, your tech over there? Yes, absolutely. So these are examples of what we can build with our technology. And this is a, a building sensor that was developed that's yeah. my, by Oak Ridge National Labs. Yeah. So we developed this for them and it has temperature, humidity, and light, and you can and it is based off the LoRaLAN network. So these can be put in a building and monitor all sorts of areas around a building. So stuff is happening inside here. That is correct. Yes. And so with you solar? would see you would and we integrated a solar panel into it. That's not one you, you make. No, no, it's integrated, and the chip there. There's a battery in there for battery backup. And, and also a LoRaLAN wireless network in there. And this, this is a humidifier? So this is a humidifier showing so that we are actively monitoring all of the sensors in the booth. And you can see here, so we have six sensors throughout the booth. We've demonstrated with light, heat, and humidity so that we can show it actively working. Nice. All right. And uh, what's this one right here? So this is a representative of our capacitive user technology. Uh, and so if what you- What is this for example? So this, is, this was a demonstration of converting a, uh, a demo to add onto Silver Flex and be able to use capacitive technology with it and how you, it enables the backlighting. So you're able to backlight this with using uh, clear conductive inks. So you just put some light through, Correct. through your transparent conductive Correct. Which systems. You, right, which you would not be able to do with a PC board. Nice. All right. And this and one? Th this is a, another one of our demonstration units of implementing capacitive touch technology and proximity sensing. So we have a scroll wheel, we have our slider, and then typical discrete buttons but it is also representative of the backlighting capabilities. This stuff is, is there like millions of these in the world? Yes, that you yes, are yes. So you, yes, you see that on set top boxes, you see that in cars, the new touch on the on cars, that's all that capacitive touch, as well as on high end appliances. And that's flexible electronic, printed electronics that you do? Correct, exactly. It's out there in the millions of units. It, it's out there in the mil millions of units. What's this one? Right, so this is a Bluetooth temperature and pressure sensor built onto, on our flexible circuitry. It was originally designed and on a PC board. We converted it to a silver flex, and it is actively monitoring temperature and pressure and transmitting it via Bluetooth to our, our tablet right here. And this is a flexible battery also? That is a flexible that you, battery, you correct. you get with a partner? Exactly, so we, we, have, we have batteries that we develop ourselves, but we also use ones from partners, and we integrate them into the circuitry. And then it just, this little thing sends over there. Bluetooth. That is correct, yes. And so we have, right now, we have three attached, and they are constantly monitoring the temperature and the pressure via Bluetooth. And we've been able to test this up to about 200 meters so we can collect data from about 200 meters away. A little thing like this is gonna last for a long time and? So basically between three and six months, depending on the battery. But it's so small. Yes, so, but it will last between three to six months. It depends on how often you're monitoring your temperature. Is something like this in the mass production? Is it big? Is it everywhere? So we have, just we, have program, we, have program, we have programs that have not been released yet, but that are in 
going to production. That's what we do. We help. We work with customers to basically develop their product and bring it to production. Can you explain a bit those? Uh, so there's one big chip there. Yes. And what's the other stuff? So we we may have uh, we have ICs. We have other capacitors, resistors on there. There's a chip antenna, and so it's all doing the processing in order to be able to to transmit the data. And this is for off based off of a Nordic chipset. So it's an NRF 51, something like that? that that's and is it, correct. Is it really greatly suitable to this kind of flexible products to use a ARM Cortex M0 kind of device that like the Nordic? Oh, absolutely. That, that's what we're demonstrating is that we can take PCB material products and convert them to silver flex. Nice. All right. And that's, that's, of course, what this is demonstrating. And then what we did is we built it into a smart label to represent what can be done with the technology. Are you working with any flexible CPUs? Yes, we are working with ASI as a partner to develop to attach their chipsets with their flex dies. So this so. is um, ASI is doing some cool stuff. ASI is definitely doing some cool stuff. Yes, and we're working with them to basically integrate that into the flex materials. Uh, I would leave it to them to share what they're doing nice. uh, because they are a customer of ours. Nice. All right. Um, and this is an NFC. This is a temperature logger. So it is logging temperature over time. It has a battery in it. And uh, one of the circuits is over there is represented. So there's a battery, has the electronics in it. NFC? Yes. And so it's storing the data. And then what you would do is take this, put it up to an NFC device like this download the data and you would get all your data points. So this is a it's got a little sticker thing you can just put it on stuff. Correct. You could stick this onto label onto onto uh, uh, a product, a package and so there's the 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 back side of the of the product. With battery. With battery, with two with two batteries, correct. And how long do you think the battery is going to last on this? Uh, on these with these batteries they last they can last up to about 6 months. So but it's it's, cr it's crazy. It just looks like a little sticker. Yes, that barely, that that is the it's goal. Is thicker than a s sticker. That it's like that's a, that's what people want is to, to give you the next generation of barcodes, right? You first had barcodes, and then you had an RFID, which is all static information. Now you're going to be able to get dynamic information. Where your package has been? Has it maintained the right temperature? Has it uh, has it had any shock to it? Um, and eventually, potentially GPS, so that if your tr if your package gets stolen or misplaced, where is your package? And so we will have smart labels that will be able to do that. And if is there can. some other potential things that goes further away than NFC? So something blue, like so even cellular or something like that, or is that too crazy to consider? In, in which? Like um, you, you were showing LoRa. Right? Yes. And how long is the battery in a lower device right there? So but it, you need to constantly charge it with solar. That's correct, yes. Right. Because it's it, you're, you're slower, transmitting uses more power. much yes, more power, farther distance, right? So and that's the that's the trade off that you have right now with the batteries is that if you want a very thin, small battery, you're gonna get a limited amount of lifetime. But is there any chance that you might just like ping every half hour? You can do that. That is And your then choice. still yes. use a thin system like that kind of. That is correct. Right. So that is the choice of how many times you want to get your your data and, and be able to transmit it. Right? So like with the Bluetooth with the BLE, this will transmit up to about two hundred meters and you can you can set the amount of data time that you want to collect the data and it, you, it will last probably between three and six months. But when you, when you have a device that looks so cool like this one, yes. um, let's say it lasts, you said six months? Three, uh, somewhere six. between three and six months. Again, it's about yeah. how often you're collecting the data and how, long, how often you're transmitting. How much of this is, is uh, easy to recycle or what you what you can do after three or six months? Well, that's that is the key. Is silver silver flex is much more is environmentally the friendly the than throwing away PC boards or copper open. flex. Thank so you. that's where the future of this is going to go. So this is environmental friendly to use silver. To it's more, easy to more, melt back and reuse. For, uh, yes, it would be. And so if you have labels that are going to get thrown out, it would be it would be easier to recycle. The batteries are moving towards more environmentally friendly batteries. The ones that you see here like this. Is this lithium ion? Is lithium ion, right? Is it 
it's so hard, it's, uh, needs to be it's hard to it's toxic a little bit that is correct so we do have a more environmentally friendly battery uh, from that we've licensed from on the Empucel technology which is the uh, zinc manganese and we can manufacture this with those batteries but which other parts here are toxic Anything? So uh, the, the chips are the chips, but the the encapsulant is is more is more environmentally friendly. The silver, the PET, it could be recycled, so it is more environmentally friendly. Nice. You know, there's always there's always a recycling process that you have, but it would not it it would not be toxic. Because this kind of stuff might be made into trillions it eventually. Could, exactly um, right. At, at least billions, and at, then you want to you want to have a nice kind of idea of what you want to do with all this it, stuff. Exactly, and potentially. We may see paper, uh, paper circuitry that would be more disposable, and so that's where we're going. This is the starting point, and then we'll we'll get to more environmentally friendly products as it goes. What are you showing here? So this is the capability of using the printed electronics in medical applications. All right. So this is uh, an ECG vest, where instead of having the wires, now it's a, a single-use device. You put it on the patient. And you're able to measure the body, you know, the body sensing, and so, and then it does not to be does not to be cleaned. It gets it gets recycled afterwards. So this is of. just like a kind of like a, pr a demo concept. So no, this is actually a customer's product that's out there. So why is it shaped like this with all these different? And where does because it go inside need, the shirt? Well, if you have an ECG, you have electrodes that go all over your body. And that's what it's monitoring. What are the electrodes? So the electrodes would be here in the, in these areas. And it's it's right there included, or you need to add. So something? you would you would add hydrogel to this, and then you would just be able to stick it on, and that would be the electrode. It says sixty-seven. Is there that many electrodes around yes. here? Yes. No? Yes. The more it depending on what like? a patient, what the doctor uh, needs, the more the electrodes you have, the better it is. Uh, we don't control that. And but uh, I mean, I don't think there's that many electrodes, but. That's how the that's how the customer numbered it. And this is the power or something. The yes, this would this, this would be the connecting. Yes. And where do you have the battery? So there is no battery. This would actually connect to their their monitoring equipment in the hospital. So it's kind of like a. It's not wireless. And if see RFID, how does it trigger it? Are you connected to a? Cable? Yes, it would still be hardwired to a cable. That's somewhere that be, right. the cable connects. Right. Right. There's some more stuff here so, and here. Right. So this was a demo about using. Uh, a, a flexible circuit to to help uh, medicine absorb into the body or through the skin and we developed this as a as a trial with a customer and so you you have your your medicine on your circuitry and you're able to stimulate it and have it integrate and into the body more nice. more quickly right so electrodes are very very popular and we're seeing that medical companies want to be able to monitor more aspects of the body, whether you're walking around and you're not in a hospital environment, and the silver and the flexible circuitry is going to allow that. So how's right. been the ID Tech X show for you? Oh, uh, it's great. It, yeah. it's, it's actually wonderful. People are getting exposed to our capabilities. The one question that's always asked is, can you actually manufacture this in production? And the answer is yes, that we can go from concept to, de to development all the way up in scale into the millions or tens of millions of pieces if needed, or hundreds of millions. And yesterday I was doing lots of videos around the hall. I think I've, I've seen your brand several places. You have uh, lots of partners here, right? We, yes, we do. Right, so, so we're working with a lot. Of, what, can you mention some? Or? Uh, well, ASI and Sunray are, ASI, American Semiconductor, and Sunray Scientific are two of our partners here. Uh, so I don't know if there's others, but yes, we do have a few, that, a number that we are working with. And for example, with Sunray, they have some technology to connect the chip nicely. That is correct, right. Uh, and the ASI is doing some flexible flex, chips. The, the flex dies, that is correct, yes. But there's so. all kinds of other stuff happening here, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of interesting things here. Uh, what we look for is what's going to be able to scale up to, to higher volume production. And so we're always looking for those new technologies. So this is a very good place to be for both sides. This is the big, this is the big topic, uh, the big uh, goal of the ID Tech X show is to get to what's in the next trillion, uh, uh, trillion dollar industry, right? Correct. What's the next? Yes. Uh, what's gonna be all over the place? How soon are you gonna put all these 
like in the carpets uh, and the tables. Uh, so carpets, and, tables, uh, and these kinds of things. Yeah, inside exactly. The it's more. It's but it's really about where the value, where you're going to get the value of the data, right? Of the of the feedback. Just because you can put a product uh, uh, electronics into it, what's the value to either the consumer? or the manufacturer, those are the things that are going to determine whether it's going to be successful or not, right? Is how much value does that data have that you're getting back? Or are you uh, attracting more, more users because of the indication? Those are all the things that will go into it to, make, to determine whether what you have is going to be successful. And is it all this stuff potentially uh, cheaper, more affordable than traditional ways of doing electronics? In in the general sense, it is more it is more cost competitive. Um, if you can do it in a PC board, PC boards are usually going to be the way that you're going to do it. But there are there's other value for these. This material is very cost effective. The silver is cost effective. Uh, additive manufacturing is cost effective. You don't have as many toxins in the environment. So there are, there are definitely benefits for this, and the additive printing process can allow for it to scale up much faster. And do you partner with ink providers, or do you make your own? Oh, no, we actually, uh, we have a number of ink partners, right, that are probably here from uh, Henkel, DuPont, I don't want to, yeah. everybody's here, and we're working with a number of them. And the substrates, the plastics, The substrates, there's, there's different substrates, and, and we have a number, of, and, and different coatings. And batteries. Uh, and, and, and the batteries, right, exactly. So we're, we're looking at everybody's technology here and seeing how we can integrate it into ours. And it, that's why it's a really good time to, to be at ID Tech X to see what's happening.